uh, Mr Speaker. I call Todd Muller. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. And uh, look, it's an absolute uh, privilege for me to stand up here and to give what is essentially my first speech, uh, if you exclude the 90 seconds that I was allotted for the Cook Islands uh, Portability uh, uh, Bill, which of course is a very important bill, which is in front of the Social Services Committee. And we very much uh, look forward to uh, uh, having the report back of that after we listen to the submitters in the next couple of weeks. But with the exception of those 90 seconds uh, in my maiden speech, this is the very first time that I've had the opportunity to uh, get up uh, and say a few words uh, to um, the House with respect to um, this particular bill, and in fact on any particular bill. Uh, look, firstly, can I wish you all um, a, a very good New Year. I know for some of you, particularly across the other side of the house, you're probably looking forward to Christmas already. Uh, but um, look, it's, it was a fantastic break. Uh, certainly it was uh, for me, and uh, I hope it was for you, Mr Speaker. I understand that uh, you occasionally holiday in the beautiful Bay of Plenty. You've been known to do so over the last 65 years, and I hope uh, your, uh, um, your last holiday uh, was uh, very enjoyable. Uh, on a more uh, sombre note, however, I do uh, want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the uh, passing of a couple of very special New Zealanders. Uh, uh, particularly if I could start with uh, Dr Api Mahuika. Now, I, I appreciate uh, there were many in this House uh, probably more qualified than me to talk to his contribution to New Zealand and Ngāti Parau last week. Uh, but I would like to add my small voice to that acclaim. Uh, I had the privilege over the last uh, six years to be sitting on the Waikato uh, University Council uh, with Api. Uh, he was an extraordinary person to uh, uh, sit alongside in a governance context. He was a great leader, a thoughtful um, and uh, quite passionate man for obviously Ngāti Perot, and he will be uh, sadly missed not only uh, in terms of the representation and leadership that he has given uh, uh, his iwi, uh, but the wider uh, country. I also want to acknowledge uh, uh, Celia Lashley. Um, I had met her a couple of times. I was very impressed with uh, both her stature uh, and her forthrightness around what uh, boys in particular look for uh, in um, uh, good, solid family relationships. I'm the eldest of four boys. Be fair to say, I think uh, my parents uh, took a leaf out of her book, um, and uh, you know, perhaps in a, in a small way, I'm a contribution uh, to her outlook on life. Uh, look, uh, Mr Speaker, it's very uh, enjoyable to be actually standing up here and talking to uh, uh, this particular uh, piece of legislation, uh, the Social Security Amendment Bill Number 3. Look, um, when I uh, look at legislation like this, and I noted uh, the comments of uh, fellow MP Derek uh, Ball before, being new here and uh, looking at it for the first time, and I think his comments around bringing fresh eyes to uh, the debate is one that resonates for me as someone who's uh, brand new to this place. So look, um, whilst we have different eyes, I tried to do the same thing, uh, Derek, and essentially um, uh, I asked myself three questions. Uh, the first is, you know, is this targeting a demonstrated need? Is it fair for the applicant and for the taxpayer, those thousands of hard-working uh, New Zealanders whose taxes, we have the responsibility to spend effectively and appropriately? And I guess ultimately, is it delivering uh, an improved outcome? And Mr Speaker, in my view, I think this bill delivers uh, on all those three thresholds. You know, it is important that we provide assistance to those uh, who need it most. And I think everyone understands that that is a key component of who we are as a country. It has underpinned our social services framework uh, for many, many decades. But it is just as important that we can give assurances to taxpayers in particular that it is being distributed fairly uh, and any loopholes uh, identified where inequitable disparities can occur are closed. And so at the fundamental core of this legislation is a view that we need to do the right thing by those who are seeking to uh, have support by the government, but also do the right thing by those uh, who are paying taxes and ensuring that that tax is being well and effectively spent. Mr Speaker, it is appropriate 
in my view, that we have a framework that prevents students who are eligible for a student allowance from applying and receiving the accommodation supplement. And so I have found it interesting just listening to the debate over the last uh, 20 or 30 minutes, particularly from the Green Party, and I'd have to say I didn't quite really get at the end whether they're for it or against it. They spoke on both sides of the argument. Um, and I appreciate that when we brought this uh, to the House the first time and obviously then subsequently went away th through select committee process, <laughs> I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't here and, and uh, neither were a number of others, uh, but I understood that it had a broad uh, cross-section of party support. And so I thought that the Green Party uh, would uh, be able to see this um, through rational eyes, particularly when you can consider the sartorial elegance, at least one of them who are sitting over the other side. I appreciate your choice of tie, sir. It's, it's just where it needs to be. I honestly thought that, that's, um, that the Green Party, when you strip away the rhetoric, would have actually said that this is something that deserved their support. I'm disappointed that it uh, apparently, if I heard them correctly, perhaps still doesn't. Accommodation supplement, Mr Speaker, is intended to assist low to middle income people with accommodation costs, not for those who are seeking um, to lift their skills at a tertiary or vocational institute and can receive the student benefit. There may well be a debate, and I listen to you there, I, I, may, and I understand you're shaking your head and that's fair enough, but ultimately and it's interesting when you have a debate around student uh, allowances, immediately it goes to, particularly on the other side, that it's not enough, it needs to be, needs to be improved, it needs to be lifted. There never seems to be a, an acknowledgement that actually uh, there is a benefit that accrues to the student by going to university, and this is a very, very generous scheme, and it has resulted in more students being involved in uh, tertiary and vocational uh, uh, institutions than ever before, but it's still not good enough. It's still not good enough from there, from on the other side. It's, it, everything should be free. It doesn't matter how we earn it in this country. It just should be free for this. For, no, I didn't. And for those who, uh, and, and for the, the New Zealanders who work to be able to pay taxes, I, I find it a remarkable, remarkable. Well, I, well, there wasn't silence. I was talking. I was, talk, I was trying to talk over. Uh, your uh, constant uh, questioning. Look, I'm losing my strength. At this rate, I'm going to have to sit down before I've got to my main points, which would be quite extraordinary. Um, <laughs> I've got a number. So, for example, a sole parent in Auckland with two children, the maximum amount that can be paid an accommodation supplement is 225 You might learn something if you listen, seriously. $225 per week. Compared to sixty dollars, they've woken up. Uh, compared to sixty dollars for accommodation benefit on the student allowance, the returns from study, as I've said before, on the other side of the house, particularly New Zealand First, the returns from study accrue to individuals as well as to society. So the clear policy between the, behind the student loan and allowance system is to share the cost between students and the government. Students should not be reliant on other benefits and grants results in the government paying a greater share of student support. Mr Speaker, this is a very fine piece of legislation and one that deserves our support. I'd just like to finish because it's remarkable how fast the time goes when you're having fun. Um, I'd just like to finish with some comments with respect to uh, ACC. Uh, again, there's a principle at stake here in my view. Any payment received by an ACC recipient should then be deducted dollar for dollar from any benefit they receive. This deduction needs to occur whether the payments are made by ACC or any accredited employer. I think I heard from the other side that there was a general acknowledgement uh, that that is uh, a sound piece of public policy and therefore is a piece of legislation that should get uh, hopefully unif uh, pretty universal uh, support. Because, Mr Speaker, it is inequitable that claimants in essentially the same circumstances can be treated differently. Mr Speaker, this bill is about getting the incentives right. It's about removing the opportunity to game the system. It's about fairness, it's about equity, and above all ensuring we have the collective confidence in our social services and compensation frameworks. It's a sound bill. I do want to acknowledge those who have gone before and the select committee to have, who have brought this bill to this place. I want to acknowledge the Minister of uh, uh, Social Development. I think she provides great leadership in this space 
And, uh, Mr Speaker, I commend the bill uh, to the House. Mr Speaker. I understand the next call is a split 